Hey everyone, and welcome to my second of two videos about the Minolta XG1. In this video, we're gonna take the features of this camera and we're gonna look at them and talk about how to use them. We're gonna talk about basic things, loading film, mounting lenses, changing the battery, and more advanced things like mode shooting and using the self timer and some things like that. So to start off with, let's load and unload film from this camera. So we start by opening the film back, which you do by lifting the knob and popping it open. Always before you open the film back, what you want to do, let's start this over. We're going to start this by opening the film back, but first, before you open the film back, you want to rewind the film to make sure that there's nothing in there. If there's something in there, it will stop. You'll get tension. And you don't want to jerk the film if it's rewinding. We'll get to that in a minute. But you want to make sure that there's no film because if you open up the film back with film in it, it's going to ruin it. But to open up the film back, you just lift the knob and then the film back opens. And there we go, we're inside the camera. So you take your roll of film and you slide it into the film cassette chamber. I'm going to hit the shutter button one time. I'm going to turn the camera on, then I'm going to hit the shutter button one time. Pull out a leader and make sure when you push the shutter button and you're loading film that your fingers do not get into the shutter and neither does the film. You don't want to jam the shutter. So with that in place, we're going to advance and advance. And now, in real life, what you would do is you would close the film back and you would advance three more frames and you would be ready to go to start shooting. I'm going to show you what happens inside your camera when you're taking pictures. So here we are inside the camera and you compose your image, you meter it properly, you focus it, you get everything set, the proper shutter speed, and things we're going to talk about in a minute, and then you activate the shutter advance the film and you do this for your entire roll of film. Now remember anytime you have film it cannot be exposed to light. It's different than digital technologies where if the film is exposed to light it's ruined. It gets film can be used one time only for an image. It's not it's not a sensor. So you've taken all of your all of your film, you've gotten through 24 or 36 frames and you're ready to rewind it. To rewind the film, you push this button on the bottom until it clicks, and then you rewind it with the film rewind knob. My thumb's doing the job of the film back right now. You can see that it just rewinds. There we go. You can take the film back, film out now, and that is how you load, take pictures, advance, and rewind your film. And of course, remembering again, Anytime you have film in there that you want to keep, you keep the back closed until it's completely rewound. So the process for taking a picture in mode shooting, first thing we got to do is mount the lens. To mount the lens, red dot to red dot clockwise. Lens is mounted. To unmount the lens, you push the button with the release right there, anti-clockwise, and remove. Now that you have your lens mounted, what you want to do is just set the aperture set the aperture. So just like that. And I'm gonna set it at f5.6. That's a good aperture. So I've got the lens set at f5.6 and I can either meter, which we'll see in just a minute, and determine that it's going to be f or 1 60th of a second, or I can set it in aperture priority mode. The, lens, the camera will now know that I'm at f5.6 and based on the light coming in through the lens, it will choose the best shutter speed. So when you're in aperture priority mode, you have a couple of advantages. You can use exposure compensation. So right now, it's at, if the camera says it, it's f5.6 at 1 1 25th of a second, then if you set this up so that the A is next to the 1, it's going to get one stop of more light, which would be f5.6 at 1 60th of a second. 2 is 1 30th of a second. 
and those are adjusted in half stop increments. Same thing going the other way, 1 2 50th and 1 500th for instance. And basically, the faster shutter speeds are negative 1, negative 2, or if you're at 1 500th, negative 1. The slower shutter speeds go the opposite direction. So these numbers correspond to the number of, to the shutter speed. And you can just track those by looking at the dial. The exposure compensation only adjusts the shutter speed and it only works in aperture priority mode. The reason that it only works in aperture priority mode is because f5.6 at 1 1 25th adjusted plus 1 to 1 60th is the same as saying f5.6 at 1 1 25th plus 1 is 1 60th or minus 1 is 1 2 50th and so in manual mode all you have to do to exposure compensate is rotate the dial the number of stops you'd like to compensate in automatic mode you're setting the a to the dot to the number of stops you want to compensate to tell the to tell the camera to do it for you and that's pretty spiffy that's a feature that a lot of automatic cameras don't have so once you've lined everything up you've got it metered properly whether you're in automatic or manual mode you take your photo and then you advance your frame now when film is actually in here this will spin as you take photos. If you want to take a self timer photo, you can see the red light there is blinking. And of course, as you get closer to the end, it starts to blink a little bit faster. And so all you do to set it in self time to take a self timer photo is set this dial to self timer. Off obviously is off, on is ready to go. Now, all of this is dependent upon, however, the camera having the proper batteries because this is a completely electronic camera. So to change the battery, what you need to do is grab your nearest Portuguese 50 centavos coin or equivalent and unscrew the battery cap. There we go. And one of the batteries just falls out because it's that great. It's that, that much of a team player, it's willing to help. So here's the battery chamber with the battery cover released and the batteries taken out. It takes two LR44 batteries and they slide into the battery holder, which is built into the battery cover, as shown in the little sticker, which is negative terminal down. So here's our batteries, negative terminal, negative terminal, and and we're going to slide them right in there. Grab our coin again. And you don't want to cross thread it. It should just thread very, very easily. So if it doesn't thread easily, back it out and try to reseat it. As you can see, I, I actually don't even have to hold this. It just, it just threads that easily. So it's a very easy thing to thread. And now we've changed the batteries. So a couple of special features on this camera. You've got the flash hot shoe, and it syncs at 1 60th of a second for electronic or modern flashes. And that you can tell that because the 60th is a different color. It's not just that your camera's old and the paint has changed color differently there. Actually, 60th is marked intentionally for that. And so what that means is that as long as you are at 1 60th of a second or slower, your flash will sync properly. And the reason for that is because of this camera's shutter curtain. So let's say that my hand represents, let's say that this is a scene you want to take a, a flash photo of. Now my hand represents the shutter curtain that stands between the photo and the film. So at 1 60th of a second, you take a picture, the shutter curtain moves out of the way, and then the entire fr frame is exposed to the film briefly. And then the other shutter curtain comes back in and closes behind it. And the same process occurs at 1 30th of a second with the time being longer and so forth. However, when you get to 1 1 1 25th and faster, the curtains don't actually move faster. The shutter time is shortened because the curtain opens and then the other curtain comes in behind it. 
so that at no time with 1 one twenty fifth, 2 50th, 5 hundredth, or 1,000th is the entire film plane exposed to light at the same time. At 1 1,000th, 1, it might only be a thin little strip like that. So if you were to take a flash photo at 1 1,000th of a second, your image would come back looking like that, being properly exposed, and everything else being black because the shutter curtain would block the light from the flash getting to the film. One of the things I really like about this camera is that it has the shutter release for the cable on the side, right there. And what that means is that you can plug the cable shutter, re shutter release in and stand next to your camera instead of behind it. But it also means that when you're advancing the film, instead of the cable release being in your way when you're trying to advance the film, it's off to the side. Cable release is also not in the way when you're trying to change settings or adjust the ISO, things like that. To adjust the ISO on this camera, you simply lift up the dial right there and set it to the ISO you would like to shoot your film at. You can either shoot it at your film at the rated ISO or you can push and pull. And there's a video I have up on uh, that I've uploaded about pushing and pulling film that you can use to help understand a little bit more about the results that you get from pushing and pulling film. So normally this is the point in the video where I hold the camera's viewfinder up to the camera and I tell you what you're seeing. Uh, this has too small of a viewfinder magnification and frame coverage for me to do that so I can't you can't actually see anything looking through it but what I will tell you is that the way that the meter works is that you, on the right side you have a, a, a list of shutter speeds from a thousandth down to a thirtieth, a couple of dots, and then a, a one second indicator. And the light on this, it has a little red light that only operates in automatic mode, in, uh, in the aperture priority mode. And then it will light up and tell you whether you have a shutter speed which is one sixtieth, one thirtieth, slower than that down to one second, from 1 15th to 1 half is just one of the two dots, and then 1 second. Um, if you have a shutter speed of 1 1 25th and faster, it does not have any dots. And then there's nothing that lights up in the viewfinder when you're using manual mode. So when you're shooting with this, you have to be a little bit aware of what's going on with your camera settings because it doesn't give you very much information to help you understand what you're doing sometimes. And that's a little bit, a little bit frustrating uh, if you're trying to figure out what's going on. So that is something to consider if you, in your process of learning, want to be very diligent about recording your exposure information. And so that's, that's it. That is the Minolta XG1. If this video was helpful, please give me a thumbs up. That lets me know I'm on the right track. If you would like to subscribe and find out when more of my film photography videos technique videos and things like that are coming out, please do. If you have any questions, please leave them below. I'm pretty good about responding fairly quickly. If you have any ideas or thoughts for other videos, please let me know. And if I have the technical skill and knowledge, I'm more than happy to make those videos for you. And one last thing before we go, thank you guys for watching. Why am I doing this off camera?